cool. Right. Hello. Uh, something slightly different today um, because today is actually like the first day. All right, let's actually look at the screen. This is like the first proper time I've been out of the. I've been out of home since recording my footage. Well, no, since writing up my assignments for my assignments for masters, which you've probably seen in the last video if you check the channel regularly. My hand guy, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, what I want to do today is just a quick tour of Leaders Vale. So we're currently in Leaders Vale Studios in Ebba Vale, and this is the control room. As you can probably hear, it's pretty, pretty dead. Um, I don't know how well the quality of this will come out because I'm using the microphone on my phone. Uh, I've got a nice little um, wide angle lens, which makes it look a little bit better. So if I take the lens off, <laughs> a bit close. I don't like that. So that's what it is. It's this little thing that kind of clips on and makes everything look a little bit better. Let's see if I can find a link for that. Just put it in the comments for you. We've been here since about 2000 and. 15. Uh, we took over the studio. Um, I was working with Nick in Rockfield and the Abbeville Institute approached Nick about taking over this place. Um, at the time it worked out really well for him because he was living in Tredigo which is five minutes over the road kind of that way and it just meant that for smaller sessions, for mixing sessions, he didn't have to travel back and forth from Monmouth to his mix room in Rockfield and it is a bit, it was a bit closer by and it also meant that like we could do sessions at a much, much cheaper rate than what we were able to do in Rockfield. And obviously when you're working with some younger bands or new up and coming bands, the budget isn't quite there. And also meant that when we would go into, when we go into Rockfield, we can provide the option saying, well, we'll do drums and, you know, the big bits there and we can come back here and kind of fix it. So if we look above, all of these panels originally on the walls. So we had blue and gray. Um, all the panels around were kind of blue, gray, blue, gray, blue, gray, blue, gray. And when we moved in, the first thing we actually did, we just went, we just got some fabric and we took them all off the wall. We, we, we kind of conditioned them to make it look a bit nicer because that's the most important thing when we're doing video stuff or recording, it just made the vibe a little bit better. So we just changed all the panels to black and kind of paisley kind of patterns. Running Pro Tools HD. I think we've got licenses. Um, we've got licenses for Pro Tools 10 and 11. We're running 10 because it's more reliable than 11. Um, the reason being is when you start adding plugins so that there's an issue of 11 where delay compensation doesn't update. I've got at home, I'm running Pro Tools 12 2018, which will be 2019 whenever that gets updated. Um, um, it, the reason I kind of stick on to Pro Tools 10 here is just because it works. We've got the HDX licenses and we've got the TDL, you know, the, the DSP plugin. So quite nice, nice little compressor, you know, preamp racks. We've got the pre's coming here. Uh, DDA. 32 channel desk as well. And yeah, we've got a little tape machine as well. So if we just go behind, we have the tape machine behind was what was used by Public Service Broadcasting for the album Every Valley, which we actually shot in the hall, which I'll try and get some footage of. There's not really much else to say. It's a really, really nice room. Everything that we've actually, we've always been really surprised by both rooms, how well everything's translated. So we, you, you can kind of throw the mixes that I have in this room. There's nothing that really stands out to me. And it sounds as I expect it when I take it in my car. Uh, speakers, KRK, uh, the XT8s, and then we've got the eggs. Eggs are mine. I'm using most of those. I'm usually using them when I'm on sessions. I really like them. They're the SC electronic ones, not the Monroe. Um, they just work for me. I really like them. They're voiced very similarly to the NS10. You can make them flat on hi-fi mode, but I just kind of just keep them on the NS10. Um, I was offered like an upgrade for it to the um, Monroe Sonic one, which is basically adapting the power amp rather than actually changing anything to the speakers. Um, power amp is somewhere over there. Cool. Uh, let's just quickly go over here. So then we've also got uh, a patch bay, which I'm sure you've all seen before. And then we've got the compressor, uh, the comp outboard rack, which has got the JDK compressor, some DBX 160s, distressors, and purple audios. And that's all kind of done here in the patch bay output. So we can kind of root outputs. Quickly go over now to, just going to pop you in, just going to pop over there. So popping out into the lovely cupboard, oh, popping out now into the lovely corridor. So this is where teas and coffees happen. I'm really, really annoying about this. The only thing that we like is that these doors are lead lined, which is great. But the problem we've got is this is the only logical place to make tea and coffee, which is out of the way of the studio. You don't really want a kettle boiling while you're making stuff. 
But also, when, you, when you're making tea and coffee, there's not much of a gap to kind of walk past. So like if there's one person making tea and coffee, you kind of got to try and fly past us a bit, right? But yeah. And then we've got the Corridor, uses quite a lot for drums. Gone really, really blue because it's a really, really sunny day. And then into the live room. So into the live room, uh, we have, it's just a nice room. And looking at like, generally when we record, we normally have drums on like the far end here. Um, so we're looking out to the so drum kit would be here, kind of looking down from here, then over to the, the corridor and be able to talk. So the line of sight is actually really good in the control room as well. And then good setup at the moment is I'm doing a vocal session in a bit. And that's just literally set up here. So I've just got a, so what have we got? Let's go back. So we've got a Neumann TLM 103, which is a cardioid version or cardioid transformless condenser mic from Neumann. And it's based around Neumann U87, which is a bit more expensive and you can kind of switch between cardioid, figure of eight and omni. I actually really like it. There's a lot of people who don't like it that much, but it works for us and this sounds great. It's a battle really, isn't it? So that's what we're using most of the time for vocals. And then that's going in and then we've got a little stage box. <laughs> these, these inputs all go into the mic pre's all set up in studio. So that'd be audience one, two, three, four to eight. And then I've got SPL channel one. Uh, that's channel line goes into the SPL, which is my vocal channel. I use that quite a bit. I really, really like it for you know, vocals, guitars, bass. It's really, really handy. And so, and then the outputs then we've got uh, these two are just going into the headphone amp, which is there. Yeah. So let's say this room's this room's great. It works really, really well for everything that we throw at it. Um, usually we've got like the other thing is we've got a speaker link in the. Let's go. Where should we go? There we are. So we've got. There's a on the wall is a cable cord which is an instrument input, so we can kind of run guitar lead through the wall into the amp in here. So if we've got any combos or bits and pieces right in the cupboard in the corridor, we can plug them in and go into here. And I've also got there's also a speaker link as well, so we can put guitar heads in the control room and have people playing there. It's, I generally find it's much much easier to have the player in the control room than it is to have them out here, just because you don't have to keep pressing the button to talk back. So that's that. And um, yeah, it's a really, really good room with everything sounds quite dry and dead, but then that's really useful when we're coming to recording drums and the bits and pieces because we can add the ambience later on. And we've also got the corridor. And we got the corridor. And this is actually a much, much livelier room. You can kind of hear the echoes and reflections. So it doesn't really, that doesn't really work. But this is actually what you can kind of use to make the light, the drums or like instruments you want a bit more lively. If you want to do some gang vocals, I usually stick them out here somewhere and compress the hell out of them to kind of make them more lively. So it's actually really nice having this flavour um, with the drums and uh, the bits and pieces that we can use this room as well. And back into the control room, my lovely little wide angle lens that makes everything look cool. Let me know what you guys think. Um, over to the left, there might be some videos about uh, Pro Tools shortcuts. And over this side, there might be some videos that YouTube rec is going to recommend for you. But yeah, that's everything from me. Um, thanks very much for watching. And hopefully see you all again soon.